Welcome to Off The Ranch. I'm super happy to announce that I have partnered with Omaze for this video to bring you one of their biggest prizes yet, a four bedroom, four bath, beautiful dream home in Austin, Texas worth $1.8 million or the prize could also be $1.3 million in cash. Everything's bigger in Texas and you'll certainly live large in this house made for the modern millionaire. Located in Austin's desirable Travis Heights neighborhood, you're within walking distance of South Congress Avenue where the music is live, the barbecue sizzles, and the shopping is top notch. The house is totally custom, decked in walnut and clean lines of Scandinavian design. Enjoy soaring ceilings, hardwood floors, and a deck off the open concept kitchen and living room, plus a main bedroom suite with a private patio. And the cool thing about Amaze is that you're entering for a chance to win and your donations support charities like Folds of Honor. It was found in 2007 by Lieutenant Colonel Dan Rooney and it provides education scholarships to the spouses and children of America's fallen or disabled service members. So your support could help a hero's loved one graduate, pursue a career, and then build a life that honors that veteran. Folds of Honor has actually already awarded 29,000 scholarships. So by supporting this charity, you're also entering to potentially win a stunning $1.8 million dream home in Austin, Texas, or $1.3 million cash. Go to omaze.com slash off the ranch to enter and the best part about it is your donations go to support the Folds of Honor Foundation. That is omaze.com slash off the ranch. Go there, donate, good luck. On the road now, uh, hopefully going to make a very good purchase today, hopefully. So I need some kind of a skid steer. I've, I've borrowed my dad's before. You've seen my dad's on the channel a lot. I've used it a ton. Uh, I had to give it back. He actually shares that with another family. Him and another guy bought it. And so like him and his friends share it. And then me and his friend's son also share it. So there's, it's like always being shared. And so I haven't had it in a few months. We need, I think I need a full-time skid steer at my property. We always need stuff with the ranch, with the house build, everything. And then right now our road, is just completely destroyed from all the rain. So I need to get a skid steer that I can spend a lot of time in flattening out that road, trying to make it freaking passable because it's a wreck. So I've done some research and I found one in San Antonio that I think is gonna work. It's pretty slick. It's a Bobcat brand. It's a, called a T870. I know that doesn't mean much to anyone, but some people will be interested. It has 100 horsepower, which is a lot for a skid steer. Uh, my dad's Bobcat, pff, it's a, 20 year old unit or something it's probably got like 40 horsepower i don't know it's it's much smaller and so i should be able to do like everything with this one and it has tracks which is really cool my dad's was a is a wheel skid steer um so this one should be able to do a lot more stuff we actually had a skid steer out trying to get a truck out of the mud and it was just sliding around in the mud too which i think if we had tracks it would have been a lot better so going to check out this thing it's a few years old it's a used one but i think it's pretty good decent amount of hours so i'm i'm heading over there right now to go find it. it's like 45 minutes away so I'm not gonna film there because it's weird filming in front of people when they're like who are you why are you filming here at my dealership here so I'm just gonna go get it or not if I get it I'll show it to you if I don't get it I won't show it to you <laughs> Bobcat this for those who care Bobcat T870 is the model number for those who don't care don't know like me it is just a large skid steer it's one of the biggest I think it is possibly the biggest one that Bobcat makes or at least one of the biggest ones they make I am six feet tall this is a good yeah, foot and a half taller than me it's like seven and a half feet tall a little lower in the back back here it weighs like 13,000 pounds or something but pff, a freaking dually Ford pulled it all over the place. No problem. It is a big unit. And so actually we've needed something like this for a year out here. And I just kept not purchasing it, not committing because I need, I couldn't figure out exactly what I needed. So like I also thought about buying a backhoe because there's a lot of stuff that we needed to dig down deep. Exhibit A. 
So I actually, God, I feel like the steam coming out of the ground over there. It's hot in Texas. I actually had a buddy with a backhoe come dig that the other day. Different project, tell you about that later. But I need a backhoe for a lot of stuff and the backhoes have a big bucket on the front so I thought that could work. I needed a bobcat, skid steer kind of thing for a lot of stuff. I need something to unload vehicles with, like when we get deliveries up to the house, like new wood, new tile, that kind of stuff. Like you need something to unload stuff. So we kind of need like a forklift for that kind of stuff. I even at one point thought about buying a wheel loader, which is one of those giant ones you see on the side of the highway with a huge bucket in the front so that you could, you know, fill dump trucks and stuff. Cause I want to move a bunch of dirt. And I was like, man, a wheel loader would get that done fast. And then I've also thought about buying a bulldozer. And so my problem was like, I'm not gonna buy two things, I'm gonna buy one. And I want all four of those, five of those things, but I need to buy one. And so what I settled on is just a large Bobcat skid steer with tracks. So it has a big bucket on it. Actually, I think the bucket's a foot or more bigger, wider than my dad's Bobcat. He had a Bobcat a little smaller, has wheels. So this one should be able to do a lot more out here for what we do, plus it's, much bigger, much more heavy duty if we can lift a lot of stuff with this. And we can do a lot more work with a wider bucket. Got this, this is a set of forks. They just jump right on there. And so we can pick things up off of trucks or trailers when we get deliveries at the house, when we have demolition ranch videos that have something really big and heavy, we'll just fire this thing up and go grab it and move it, which would be super nice. And then also this road needs a lot of work. And now I have something to do a lot of work. Also, yeah, the cab's air conditioned and heated. <laughs> yep, just keep that thing on full cold. That's what I'm talking about. So my dad's Bobcat had foot pedals. This one is all in the arms, which means I can't really do it very good uh, while I'm filming. But I mean, look at this. Okay, so what's really cool about this, let me just scoot over here out of the way. This one is neat because I can actually drop I can drop my bucket without having to get out. Do that, back her up, bucket gone. And then I can come over here and I can just load up the forks the exact same way without having to get out. Super convenient if you're switching quickly. Like if we have a truck get here, we're like, oh dang, we need forks. You just drop it, you don't have to get out and go open those bars. This thing's nice, really nice. I got a good, I think I got a great deal on it. Uh, it's three years old, no, yeah, it's about four years old, it's 18, and doesn't have a ton of hours. It's still really nice condition. They took really good care of it. Let me, let me show you in the engine bay. So the way to know if skid steers have been used and abused is to see if they have any touch-up paint or any repaints or anything. This is all original paint, and what that means is like, if someone is driving this thing who doesn't care about it, they back into stuff all day long because it has this huge metal plate back here. Thick, thick metal right here to protect all the engine and all the components back there. So you can back into stuff, but like if you care about your equipment, you won't. And so if it's nice and clean like this with very minimal, I mean, there's our one, someone ran into something there, someone ran into something there. Pretty minimal. The whole back isn't all dinged up, bent up, scratched up, which means someone took pretty good care of it. And then look at this engine bay. I guess you call it engine bay. I don't, I don't really know what you call it in a Bobcat skid steer like this. It is so clean, so nice. This like freaking beautiful, it looks brand new. Like whoever went and cleaned this thing up, like they spent a lot of time. I mean, these things just get dust all in them. It sucks air in through there and it's usually dust. You're driving on stuff like this and it just gets nasty. This one is freaking beautiful, big, turbocharged diesel engine. Okay, I wanna just try to dig some dirt and see how good it digs dirt. The reason I'm saying that is that my dad's was a weaker one and it was kinda getting worn out and it just like digging down was hard. It could scoop stuff all day, but like going down was, was difficult for it. So, more power, newer, hopefully less weak, and uh, also tracks, should be better.
back inside, dug a three foot hole. That's like seven feet wide. This is the greatest, I'm gonna, stuff like this that multiplies your productivity. Like what if I just needed to dig a hole like this and all I had was a shovel? I would spend hours doing it. But now I have this and I can do it in less than a minute. That's insane. Okay, but actually now I need to fill in that hole because that's right by the road. I don't want someone to drive in that hole. Okay, there was a hole there, there's not anymore. I wonder, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do this. But I wonder, can my new Bobcat lift up the back of the fire truck? I should, I shouldn't, uh, okay, I'm gonna do it. Matt, no, Matt, no. Oh my God, this is bad, shouldn't do this. Nope, it's lifting the back end of my, out here at the ranch property is these roads. The camera actually makes it not look as bad. It has some pretty terrible ruts in it. You can see like that. Uh, right now it's all hard, so it's drivable. It's just bumpy as heck. So this will make it real easy to come in and smooth all of this stuff out. I mean, it is just a mess. Like that right there is a good foot deeper than right on the outside there. This is a, this is a mess. Oh my gosh, okay. Well, I'm not actually gonna do any of that right now though, because I want to actually go take it down the long range range and see how it does. Oh God, tilt it. Look at these. I mean, that is just, this road got so rutted up. There was a river. The river usually runs there, but since we've been driving here, it's kind of lowered the road, and so the river just came over into the road, and there was so much water. It came over to the road and just made a river in our road, and then every time we drove down it, it made it get deeper, which made more water fill in, and made it sloshier, and so it was a wreck. So what I'm gonna do is use the bobcat, the skid steer, to come down here and dig out that river. I wanna make it deep. Make it nice and deep over there so water stays over there, and then build up our roads. Pull it out there, build it over here, make it higher, and then we'll have a nice dry road and a deep river. So that's what I'm eventually gonna do with this thing, and that's the main reason I'm getting it now. But some other things, well I have like, I probably have nine million things I wanna do with it. One of them though is this long range range right here. We cleared it with just the five ton. I just drove the five ton down there, and then we walked back through and like, got chainsaws and like went and cut everything so we could see down here, but it's still like all bumpy and hilly and all overgrown. So I'm gonna come through and just see what I can do with a little bit of work with a skid steer and see if it makes a difference. Just kind of like this stuff, like just all overgrown. It makes it really hard to walk down here. So say you are shooting at 100 yards, 200 yards, and you wanna go check out your target. It's nice if you can like ride a bicycle down there or take a side-by-side -side down there or something. We've got little motorbikes and it's fun to just drive them down to your target, but like you can't drive over this stuff because it's insane and a mess. Let me just see what I can do here. Good, good job, what a beast. So obviously this is not flat, but now there's no big holes. I took out the stumps, I took out all the logs. There were a bunch of these logs that were just laying across here and it needs work. I mean, I just ran over it in a few minutes. Like if I came and spent an hour out here with that thing, I can make this a nice smooth road. Also need to trim some trees, but you can see our targets down there now. Everything's kind of getting overgrown and it's just hard to get out here and actually see it. So now, I have a nice path. All right, that was just me playing around. I needed to do this, but not, not like that bad. And I'm gonna come out here and spend way more time doing that. Let me show you what actually is going to need immediate attention. This is where when it rains, the river comes in. And this one's a nice, it's a foot deep here. So this held all the water, but then right up here, it got real shallow and then it just, spilled out all across this. All of Demo Ranch right here was just under a few inches of water. 
Not a big deal. We don't have anything that can be harmed by water, except trucks getting stuck in the mud. So the river just kind of came out right here. I actually built a little dam there and we got like shovels and dug it out, trying to make it run down here. So all of this river is basically the same level as the road and it just kind of flowed across. And then we were driving on the road and it got deeper and deeper and just kept flowing <sighs> freaking river all the way down our road. Like you can see right here, river, road. Road used to be higher than river, but as trucks kept driving in it, road got about a foot lower than river. So river dried up and road just took the river. So the river went whoosh, right there. But we go get that thing, we take dirt out of river, put it on top of road, River will stay on river, road will stay on road. Also, we've been out this property for over a year and we've only had it be an issue that one time because that was the most rain we've got. But that amount of rain is probably gonna come again, so we probably should be prepared next time. Can you wrap a skid steer, like in camo? Of course, asking for a friend, just, a, of course, asking for a friend, not something I personally would ever want to do, but, but could you do it? My friend wants to know. Let me know what you guys think about the new Bobcat T870, the new addition to the Militia Ranch. It'll make getting work done out here so much easier. And as you guys know, we have a lot of work to do. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Painting a Skid Steer Camp. I mean, that's gonna be next. I mean, that's my friend's episode. He's he's doing that. We're not we're not rapping her. Somebody might though. Thanks for watching this episode of Off the Ranch. I love you! And I'll see you next time. Oh, and P.S. about the surgery. So I had back surgery a few days ago, um, and I I was kind of making some jokes about how I was gonna like be lifting weights and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I was just I was just kidding. But I will run a marathon in November if the doctor says it's okay. If he says no, it's way too soon then I won't do it. Uh, just so you guys know, I'm not gonna actually go against the doctor in regards to like that kind of, that, like I'm not gonna do that, just so y'all know. Uh, and so I kind of put it to a vote and I thought you guys would be all like, yeah, do it, Matt, but you guys were all like, don't do it, Matt. Uh, so obviously, Mayor won that round. Congratulations. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna ask my doctor, hey, how does the November marathon, that's five months away, can I run that far five months after back surgery? And if he says, not no, but heck no, then I'm not gonna do it. If he says, yeah, if you're feeling good, then do it. So I have been feeling really good. Uh, it's like four days after surgery now, and I've been just laying around all day, every day, uh, playing on my phone, watching TV, like resting up, uh, except for like walks. I've gone on walks and that kind of thing, just to kind of get my heart rate up and do something. And then like today, I did, I did possibly go buy a bobcat, but like, I didn't lift anything and I didn't like exert myself. I, I drove a truck and I drove a Bobcat. Uh, so I think I'm still being a pretty good patient. And now I'm gonna go lay down and chill for the rest of the day. So uh, yeah, I was just kind of joking. But I mean, I'm kind of serious, but I'm not actually gonna go against like, if the doctor gives me a hard no, I'm not gonna fight that. I'm not like totally dumb, I'm like half dumb. Oh. Hey, what camera is that number? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mayor.